I have six questions today for you all. These are all modeled on real questions from the November 8th, 2025 SAT. They're not the exact questions because if I did that, SAT College Board will come in and take down the video, but they're modeled on it. So if you know and learn how to do these, you'll know and learn how to do the ones you saw on the test. And if you have any questions on specific ones, feel free to put them in the comments and I'll answer them as soon as possible. So we're gonna start with this one here. Triangle ABC has angles A, B, and C. If A has a measure of 36 degrees, which of the following equations is not sufficient for finding the values of B and C? So this one is conceptual. So we have three variables, and typically with three variables, you need three equations. But we already have one of the variables, values. So we only need two equations. So we have A equals, we have B equals, and we have C equals. A we know is 36. Now they're in a triangle, so together we can get one equation of 36 plus B plus C equals 180. Now there can be another equation that pairs with this to get B and C. Which of these would that work with? Okay, so three of these will work and one of them is not sufficient. So what you see here is you're gonna get B plus C equals 144, but it doesn't actually matter what B plus C equals, it's just that B plus C equals something. If we also got B plus C again, they would cancel each other out totally, and then it would not work. So if we did A, 2B plus C plus 36 equals 170, then we subtract 36 and we're gonna get 2B plus C equals 134. And with that, we could solve using systems of equations. We're totally fine. So it's not going to be A because we have them be unbalanced, right? They're not just B and C. But which of these would get us just B and C? Okay, so B looks like it's going to be a similar thing to A. But then C is interesting because the two variables are the same. So let's see what happens with C. 2B plus 2C plus 36 equals 170. We subtract by 36 and we get 2b plus 2c equals 134. Divide by 2 and we're going to get b plus c equals 67. Okay, the numbers are different, but the b plus c is the same. So these would be parallel lines if we draft them out. So we would get no solution. We wouldn't find out that this would work. So this one won't work for us. So it has to be c because that's the one that won't work because it gets us back to the base with a B plus C, just like the original equation, okay? So you need to have different variables. This is a new question. I'm guessing it might be experimental this time, but in the future, I could definitely see it being for real. All right, so here's another one. The formula for the lateral surface area of a cone is pi R L, where L is the slant height of the cone. If the area of a cone's base is 64 pi centimeters squared, and the total surface area of the cone is 144 pi centimeters squared. What is the height of the cone in centimeters? Okay, so I'm gonna do a very quick drawing to sort of lay out what's going on. So we have this cone. We're looking for the height, which is perpendicular height. And we're told that the area of the circle is 64 pi. So I'm just gonna find what I can find by doing pi r squared equals 64 pi, and I'm gonna get r equals eight. Okay, so that's a step. Who knows what we're gonna use that for, but that's helpful. We're told the surface area in total is 144 pi, and we're given that the equation is pi r l. That's not one you'd be expected to know, and it's not on the reference sheet, so it's good to know. So pi r l is going to equal the difference between 144 pi and 64 pi. So we're gonna get 80 pi is the lateral surface area. So that's the thing wrapping around. So now let's look at this. It tells us L is the slant height. Two pi R L equals 80 pi. So we know pi is pi and R is eight. So it's gonna be eight pi L equals 80 pi. Then we divide by eight pi we get L equals 10. Now, how does that help us know the actual height? Well, if you think about it, the height and the slant height make a right triangle with the radius. 
So this is H, this is L, this is R. R is going to equal 8. This is going to be 10. So then we need to find H. We'll do H squared plus 8 squared equals 10 squared. H squared equals 100 minus 64, 36. H equals 6. So that is A, okay? Now this is a new one too, because we have to do lateral surface area cone. I've never seen one like that, but that's what I've been hearing was going on. It's not the same question again. It's modeled on the questions I was hearing about, but it should teach you how to do it. And the important thing is they give you the formula and you have to understand the relationship between slant height and height and radius. But if you get that, it comes back to the basics. A lot of these questions are more abstract than what you're used to, but then when you just see a little bit past that abstraction, you see the basics. All right, so we have seven parentheses x minus three parentheses x cubed plus nx squared plus three nx plus 27 equals seven x to the fourth minus 81. In the equation above, what is the value of n? There are multiple ways to do this one. The way I'm going to do it is by trying to get the right side to look like the left side. You could also get the left side to look like the right side, but because I know the right side is x to the fourth minus 81, and that's a difference of squares, I can do it like this. It's going to equal x squared minus nine, x squared plus nine, and then I'm gonna factor the x squared minus nine, so I'm gonna get x plus three, x minus 3. And the important thing here is I see the relationship between x to the fourth minus 81 and x minus 3. If I didn't see that, I would foil this out and work from there to find it. But this way is easier if you can see it. And if not, it's not too bad just multiplying out and seeing how the ends work. And I'm still going to have to do that kind of here anyway. So you'll see what I mean. x plus 3, x minus 3 times x squared plus 9. The sevens don't matter because they both have seven, so forget about the sevens. So we're gonna do, we have x minus three and x minus three, so now we can cancel out the x minus threes. So we have x cubed plus nx squared plus three nx plus 27 equals x plus three times x squared plus nine. And I'm gonna to have to do what I was gonna do before anyway with the x minus three multiplying by four numbers, but now I just have to multiply by foiling here. So I'm going to get on the left, x cubed plus nx squared plus three nx, sorry, plus three nx plus 27 equals x cubed plus, I'm just foiling now, 9x plus 3x squared plus 27. x cubes cancel, 27s cancel. So then you're left with nx squared plus 3nx equals 9x plus 3x squared. So what number does n have to be? The x's, so we could just say 3nx equals 9x, and n equals 3. You could do it the other way too, nx squared equals 3x squared, and n equals 3. Either way it works, and our answer is 3. So again, this is an abstract question, but it works out pretty smoothly. It's just hard because I think people will look at it and want to use Desmos, but Desmos isn't really the best way to do it. It's about factoring and then foiling. All right, and now we have this one. Each side of a 28-sided polygon has one of three lengths. The number of sides with length six meters is three times the number of sides x with length two meters. There are 12 sides with length four meters, which equation must be true for the value of x? Okay, so let's just find how many sides there are. There's 28 sides total. That is equal to the length of 6 meters is 3 times the number of sides x with length. So 
that's going to equal 3x plus x. And there are 12 sides with length 4 plus 12. So we're just trying to find the number of sides. We're going to get 4x plus 12 equals 28. And that is C. This is considered a hard question. And I saw many people asking questions about it. The issue is not is getting the numbers confused, right? There's six meter sides, but there's three times the number of sides with x. Two meter sides, but that's just two, that's just x number of sides. And 12 sides with length four meters, but it's about 12, not the four that we care about. And once you get that, you can narrow it down quickly to C, okay? This one is again, simpler than it looks just because it's not a question people are used to. And they get confused, do I need to find the perimeter? Do I need to do this? Do I need to do that? No, don't worry about that. It's just about simplifying the equation down. It's a classic, something you've been doing since middle school. So we have this one here. This is one of the trickier ones. Maybe the trickiest, the coordinate plane to the left has three points for a triangle. What is the area of the triangle? So we could draw out the triangle. It doesn't have to be beautiful, but it just has to be this. If it were just a straight up right triangle, this would be very straightforward, just base times height divided by two but it's not, or at least it's hard to tell if it is, but I don't think it is. So what we're gonna do is find how this is made into a rectangular prism. And within that rectangular prism, we can find right triangles to take them away. So like this, boom, boom, boom. Okay. So the area of the overall triangle, or the area of the overall rectangle is gonna be from negative two to five, so that's gonna be seven. And then this is from five to negative one, so six. So the area of rectangle equals 42. Now let's find the area of each of these triangles and go from there. So area of this triangle here is six by two, so it's gonna be 12 divided by two, it's gonna be six. Area of this triangle is going to be seven by five, so it's gonna be 35 divided by two. So I'll just leave it as 35 divided by two. And area of this one here, I know my drawing wasn't great, but it's gonna be one by two, four, five, so it's gonna be, it's gonna be five halves. So 5 halves plus 35 halves, so it's going to be 42 minus 6 plus 35 over 2 plus 5 over 2. So it's going to be 42 minus 26, 16. Okay, and that is the beautiful way to do this. I saw some people doing this whole midpoint thing, and it seemed kind of complicated on Desmos. If you just make a rectangle or a little box in here, and then find the three triangles around it, you'll always have that issue. You will find it very quickly. All right, and this is the last one. This is the easiest of the hard ones I found, but still a good challenge. 3,000 students take calculus. 4,000 take statistics. Of the students who take calculus, 15% also take statistics. Of the students who take both statistics and calculus, 12% take linear algebra. Of the students who take calculus, what percent take linear algebra and statistics? So this is just about multiple percent changes. So let's work our magic here. So 15%, so we have 3,000. And 15% takes statistics. So that's gonna give us 450. Of those 450, 12% take linear algebra. So that's going to be 54. So we do 54 divided by 3,000. And that is going to be 0 0.018. That's not an answer here, but it's in percentages, so we move the decimal twice, and we're gonna get 1.8, that's gonna be D, okay? So I hope this helped you. I hope you saw some questions that looked familiar to you if you took the test on November 8th, or yesterday, or earlier today. And yeah, I know they're not exactly the same questions, they're models on the hard questions, but they are meant to teach you the same concepts as those hard questions. So if you have actual questions you want me to cover specifically, you can put them in the comments and I'll be happy to go over them with you all. And I hope you're all feeling good about the test. I know it's a tough one, but just think you took it and now you can be a little free for a bit. 
And I hope it's sunny where you are, but if it's raining, I hope the rain is cleaning your windows and watering your plants. Bye.